In today's tutorial, we are painting white three different ways with techniques including dry brushing and contrast. All right, so just like the leather tutorial, we have white in three different ways. We've used some contrast, we've used some dry brushing, and as with the leather one, I think the real strength of this is that you can take these kind of basic tools and you can customize them however you want. So if you want to use less of the Fenrisian gray in the cool blue one, or you want to use more of the bone, or you want to even um, take a little bit of like a contrast like snake bite leather and drop it into each of the start steps of one of the neutral ones to make it like a warm, uh, kind of a more scrubby, dirty white or something like that. Anything is possible with this type of stuff. We're just giving you a foundation and you can take it in whatever direction you want. So without further ado, let's hop into the tutorial. So here we are, we have um, Corax White, uh, Gracer, which is a little bit shinier and is made for contrast to go over. So that's something we need to bear in mind. And then I've left one Chaos Black because sometimes you just have to be going over Chaos Black base coat. So I think it's useful. But we're gonna rock on and we're gonna start off with our fairly gray looking chap here. Now, I'm gonna be getting ironically Corax White, which is the white that we've got in the other section. And I'm gonna be dry brushing a pre-highlight with this. Now you don't want too much on the brush, but you are looking to coat quite a lot of it because we have undercoated it with a gray. So it's kind of a medium amount. Don't rush, uh, look to build it up fairly solidly. And I would actually call this kind of a, uh, an overbrush. If it takes a couple of layers, that's absolutely fine. You're just looking to build up um, some white over that gray. And we have picked a white, which is gray, ironically, but bear with me, it's uh, all part of the plan. Finally, we're highlighting, I'm using Bold Titanium White from Monument, which is my new favorite white. However, you can use any pure white that you like. So that would be White Scar if you're using GW, but you could use Vallejo or anything like that if you wanted. I've got a medium brush here, but you can stick with a big one if you like. Got a nice, crisp, easy cloth there, three steps and anyone can achieve that super easily. So sticking with the same methods, I've got our Corax White sprayed model. I sprayed this from above. Now the effect of that is that these upwards facing areas are brighter than these downwards facing areas. That's fine, that's something that I'm gonna roll with and hopefully that will kind of will reap the benefits of that in our final job. It's a little bit of a way to get a slightly more airbrushed um, zenithal technique without having to own an airbrush. We're moving straight on to a brilliant white highlight. This is the same uh, titanium white from Monument Pro Acrylics again, but like I said, you can use just GW if you want. And then we're gonna spend a fair bit of time just building up a really good level of the whitest of white highlights on this. So don't worry if it feels like it's taking you a little bit longer than you'd expect for a dry brush that's only hitting the raised areas. That's fine, it's a quick technique anyway, and this is a really, really important step. As I said, it is worth taking your time on this. Now for a final stage, if you want to really get things to brightness level a million, take some of your white paint, make sure you work it into the brush carefully. Don't take too much, work it in, but don't work off as much as we would do normally. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this on the model with, there's a lot more paint on the brush than I normally have here. I'm placing it with less pressure than normal, but there is more paint on the brush, so it's leaving more easily. Okay, so the next step is to use the Contrast Apothecary White. Now, this is probably the worst contrast in the range for difficult to re-agitate separation. I'd actually put it, um, it's nearly as bad as the technical Tesseract Glow for this, which you need to throw on the floor, generally speaking, to get anything to happen or literally mix it in. So shake the living hell out of this before you use it, you will get a better result. So several hours later, we've shaken that quite a lot. I've got a size four, and as normal, when I'm trying a wa applying a wash or a contrast, I'm gonna place it in one area and then I'm gonna use that one area as my kind of palette for the rest of the model while I take it all over. If you use too much, you can daub it up, especially if you've got a nice big belly in the brush that you're using. And contrast does give you a little bit of working time. And then what I'm gonna do is all this excess is just gonna be soaked up carefully. And the way to control this especially when you have soaked it up because it can leave lift off points, is to drag your lift off points into the recesses. That's where you want it to be the darkest anyway. 
and also it's where you can get away with, hopefully you can see that, with a big fat brush, you can literally get in there and done. It's like using a pipette in reverse, basically. You're not dropping it onto the model, you're pulling it off. Now something else you can do with contrast, which I think people don't use enough, is take your brush, wash it fully, take a fair bit of the moisture off, and then you can use contrast in reverse. So what I'm doing here is basically a, an edge highlight, but it's a removal edge highlight rather than an addition edge highlight. You can use a very low profile microfiber cloth for this, but for details such as this, I think using a brush is just a little bit more sensible and makes more sense and it is very, very, very controllable too. For number three, we are gonna be introducing a call base and we're gonna be doing this traditionally, um, traditionally in the artist's open sense anyway. So our base is gonna be Fenrisian Grey, which is a fantastic color. Really nice kind of not too extreme cool gray blue. And you can basically this however you like. I'm gonna be doing it with a couple of layers of kind of wet smushy stippling. But uh, it's up to you. If you've got an airbrush available, you can do that. You can just stipple it. Um, any of them is absolutely fine on this. The stippling is particularly fine because if you build up a little bit of texture with that and get some small lumps and bulbs in there, we're looking for something that doesn't look smooth anyway. We want kind of old cloth, so that will basically fit with the intent. Okay, so once that's dry, I've got a little bit of screaming skull, but you could pick any neutral bone. Uh, if you want to go more towards white and choose an ivory color or something like that, um, like AKs or Vallejos um, or a GW equivalent, uh, there's no problem with that. I'm choosing to use Screaming Skull though. This is going to be a slightly warmer colour, uh, but hopefully because we've included our previous layer, it'll be homogenised a little bit. And we're going to coat pretty much all of this if possible. So just leaving the recesses, um, it can be difficult on models like this, but be patient, stick with it, and you should get a solid result. For the final step on this one, I'm actually gonna start off, interestingly, by using a big brush. So I've got an extra large here. We're gonna take a little bit of our Monument White, mix it with our bone. Then carefully bring that into play. Now on this one, I am trying to kind of exaggerate the grains and granules a little bit. I want it to look soft. I make it look a bit fluffy. Personal taste, obviously, uh, there's a time and a place for stuff like this. Some people prefer that to be never, but I think occasionally there can be really good grounds for it. You can get super crisp edges if you want. Hopefully you can see that on the top of the cowl. So that's one approach to it. And then if you do want to allow it to be in the recesses, rather than just going exactly for the edges. There we go, so three fast and easy ways to achieve white. Um, I've obviously painted black around these. I think whenever you're going for a white paint scheme, it's a really good idea to consider other very strong, bold colors next to it if you would like your white to appear more white. It's all about contrast. So even if they are not like dark, dark, dark colors, you could use strong greens, strong reds, um, strong purples, anything like that, and just their kind of proximity to that will make them appear to be um, brighter in comparison. So let me know what you think, if you've got a particular way of doing white, um, or if you've got any suggested products that you find really helpful. These are just my quick ways that I'd go about it. If I was going about it slower, then I'd approach it entirely differently, but there's a real strength to using different methods for getting stuff on the tabletop quickly and then getting stuff to a high standard as fast as possible. Okay, so they turned out fantastically. Super, super pleased with these. Um, really, really just fast results. Um, one thing to note is that if I pick out one, anywhere where you have a more kind of compact, exaggerated set of folds or anything like that, all of these techniques will look better. And that's because you get kind of more pits and troughs for the dry brushing or for washes to pick up on. And generally they're just more forgiving areas. Large flattish areas are more intimidating. Small kind of hyper detailed ones are actually really forgiving. You might not feel like they are kind of, because it wouldn't make sense, but that kind of fussy detail and that all packed into a, a dense area, um, that gives texture-based painting um, and lighting just loads of scope to do all the work for you. The techniques that we've used in this one 
kind of the spread between them. Like I said, I encourage you to mix them up. Um, you can take some of the blue, mix it into some of the others. Uh, you could be using other kind of off-white colors, pastels, cool greens, um, even put a tiny drop of like uh, an orange or something in there if you want to warm things up. Uh, like sky's the limit, it's a simple foundation and from there you can customize in whatever direction that you like. So thank you very much for watching the tutorial. Hope you've liked it. If you have, please give it a like, please subscribe, hit that bell notification to be notified for future content and pop any suggestions down below for what you'd like to see in our upcoming videos. Thank you.